Welcome to H2EG Backstage. I am your host, Moak Wallace, and today I have a very talented brother who is from Houston, but he is an Austin resident. He is a gamer, he is an actor, he is an entrepreneur, he is on the cream team, Maxo cream team, DJ Scion. How you doing, brother? Doing all right, man. Thank you for having me, bro. Oh, man, it's always a pleasure. Yes, sir. I, we, we talked before um, before we started today. Yes, sir. And you enlightened me on your life. Mm -hmm. And boy, was I impressed. <laughs> boy, was I impressed. Built a crazy life, dude. But, but I, want, I want to thank you for um, taking time out your busy schedule. I know, I know that you're, you're welcome. You're welcome. You, you said you just got back from what, Florida? I just got back from Florida, man. Um, doing a couple shows with Maxo. Um, it was fun. I enjoyed Florida, man. I'll be back out there. Miami, Orlando, it was lovely. Yeah? I gotta come back. So, how, how did that come about? For you to, um, cause you're, you're not the, the uh, like, I don't wanna say official tour DJ, but you just did that leg of the tour, I guess? No, um, actually, man, me and Maxo, I don't DJ for Maxo anymore, mm. but I come in support. You know, it's always love, I'm always welcome. I help them out in any type of way that they can be helped out. So then, for instance, if like, if I need to like get some of the DJ stuff together, I do that. Hey man, if you need somebody to come check on this, check on that, I got you. Mm. You know, it's just it's just easy. It's family ties, you know. So I'm here to help out the family, make sure the um, the show goes as it should, you right, know, right. when we don't have all the parts there. Right. But it was a great time, man. So you were born in Houston, mm -hmm. raised in Houston. Yes, sir. Until you said 18 years. 18 years. When I was 18 and I uh Graduated high school, I uh, left for college, and I have not moved back to Houston, but I have been back many a times. I love Houston. Houston is always in my heart mm. and forever will be, and I'm not that far away. So, Okay, so, and you also said that you, you played football. Yes, sir. What position you play? Man, DB, wide receiver. Um, you know, going from like, if anybody know, if you when you play like Little League football, then getting to like middle school and high school, you kind of like switch positions a lot. Yeah. So like, man, I, I play linebacker, tight end, running back. Like I've tried it all, but the thing that fit me the most was DB. Um, I ran cornerback and safety. And then um, also like wide receiver. I've been out a little bit at wide receiver, but um, I can't play everything. I did defense, yeah. special teams, and my coach was like, you need to break. So we're not gonna run you on wide receiver. You need to be out there on defense tackling somebody. Really? Yeah. You look, you look more like you would be a wide receiver. Oh man, I got a little bit of anger built up in me. Oh, I got. I, I, I know. I, I know how to. I know how to take my angles and stuff. Yeah. I'm pretty, pretty smart on that, man. And um, I mean, man, when I, when I played at Bel Air, my first game at Bel Air, I had two interceptions my first game, and it was just, it was on from there. You said you play a little college. Yeah, I played at Angelo State. Mm -hmm. Wait, yeah. San Angelo? San Angelo. Man, I used to live in Midland. Oh, oh I, I, I Midland. know. <laughs> Midland. Man, uh, oil field, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. If if I felt pain in San Angelo, I know you felt pain in Midland, bro. No. Coming from Houston? Oh, yeah. Yeah. But, but It's you, culture shock. Right. But the thing is, is I was raised in the big city that when I went to Midland, I loved it. Okay, that's understandable. I, I, I love that. There's I, some people that like I lived that. in the valley. You know where the valley's mm -hmm. at? Yeah. Uh, like the Cal and Harvard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I know you're talking yeah. I lived over there. Only black guy there. Loved it. You know what I'm saying? So now that I'm I back, wish I had that mindset. Cause... I mean, it, I think it kind of crippled me a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but, but so, okay. And, hey. and you said your teams are Texans. Texans. Um, Lakers. Wait. Texans, but Lakers. I know. Wait, wait, no. See, I'm, I'm seeing if you're gonna say Rockets. I, I already, I already know what you, I already know what you're gonna ask. I'm seeing if you're gonna. Why the Lakers though? Man, um. No, what you think I was gonna ask? No, homo, man. But like, I've always been like a Kobe Bryant fucking fan, man. Kobe Bryant was it for me. Yeah. Kobe was it for me. I'm a '91 baby, so like, I caught like the tail end of of Michael Jordan. Mm -hmm. I literally remember. Some Sundays coming home from church and like Michael was playing like the Spurs right, right. or somebody. And um it was this young, young kid in a Lakers jersey, number eight. And I was like, man, that's my guy. Yeah. 
So I roll with them. I wasn't even really a Shaq, a Shaq fan. I really was just a Kobe fan. And then right. I just became a Lakers fan. And it, I've been a Lakers fan ever since. Anybody that knows me knows that I'm I'm Lakers fan. Die hard. Um, when Kobe passed away, you know, everybody called and checked up on me, man. Like yeah. I had like literally people calling me like a relative yeah. passed away. So what did that do for you when Kobe passed away? Man, I'm not going to lie. I'm going to be super honest, man. I'm going to let my guard down, bro. Like, I cried for, like, two weeks straight. Okay. Like, when I heard I was working at my job, um, I was a server when I heard. And when I when I heard, like, I immediately just went outside. Mm. And I ain't believe it. I ain't believe nothing. I ain't believe it. I'm serving my table. And the whole time I'm thinking, I'm like, nah, this can't be true. And then, like, alert after alert come yeah. out. And I'm like, damn, this might be true. Yeah. Bro, I burst out into tears in front of in front of my table and everything. Like, I couldn't even talk. Did, and my table is just like. Did you good, though? I don't even know. I, I really don't even know because, like, that day was just. Right, yeah. Nah, that, I, I feel that day, I was just so lost that day, bro. Yeah. Like, I was so lost. I remember where I stayed, where I served at. I literally could walk from where I served at to where I stayed. Mm. So, it was no point for me to drive. So, I just I just walked there. And then that, that day, not expecting it, I walked there. And, I'm, and I, was, I was so fucked up that. They let me go home and I'm walking home and like, bro, I can barely see the road. I'm going up the stairs. I can barely see the stairs. My girlfriend at the time, she's there and she's just like, she's just like, oh my God. Like, yeah. I didn't know that you were doing it like that. And like the whole day, I was just like, not good. Yeah. Not good for a, a, like two weeks, bro. I, I cried when Michael Jackson died, and I cried when Kobe died, but I think I cried more so knowing that his daughter was with him. That was me. You know what I'm saying? And then they start coming out with all these different names. They like, yeah. I'm, I'm just like, you know, I didn't know the other people in the helicopter, you know, and so, you know, when they just announced Kobe and Gigi, I was just like, my mind is lost. And then I start to get to know the other people that's mm, in the helicopter. The, the other families. And I'm just like, yeah. Like, this is tragic. Yeah. You know, all the stuff that he was doing, you know, most definitely, like, he left his mark. He had time to leave, to leave his mark. You know, I'm grateful for that. He left his mark on me. He left his mark on a lot of young people in this in this world, man. We go carry that on for him. Yeah. So. Rest in peace, Kobe. Rest in peace, Kobe. R.P. R.P. Bean. I, I didn't want to Bean. Bean. make it somber like that. My bad. No, you good. <laughs> you bad. good. Hey, man, go on and get that over with, you know? Yeah. I'm good. Emotions flowing. We good. Now let's get to the show. Yes, sir. <laughs> so, um, let's start off with a couple of trending topics a little bit. Mm -hmm. Now, COVID has been running wild. Mm -hmm. it's like it, it seems, it seems normal now. It seems normal now. Twitter, they've been having the the trending that will not comply, and it's been like them versus us. And I'm not saying us as in us, but that's just how it seems. Yeah. You have your vaccinated. And then you have the people that aren't vaccinated. Mm -hmm. And then you have places, yo, New York, um, they're strict on it. So they're fining people. They're fining like businesses 5K if they don't mandate it. Florida is fining pe businesses 5K if they do mandate it. Mm -hmm. What's your take on this? Um, My take is we're in a different world right now. Um, especially a new world from COVID, mm -hmm. just just in general. Um, my take is with the vaccine and stuff. You know, I, it, it does. It sucks that like people can't. People are being forced to to do something that they don't want to do. But man, I'm gonna be honest. It's so many different situations to where we're forced to do. You know, things that are going to save us from ourselves. So some people, I feel like some people don't understand that sometimes somebody else might be trying to save you from yourself. Okay. So for instance, if, you, if you're if you not getting the vaccine, that's your choice, that's okay, that's fine with me. 
hey man, you choose what you want to choose, but you also know that whatever you choose comes with consequences. It's just like with anything. Things have a good, bad consequences or a mix of both. Mm. So when you're doing, when you're choosing not to get the vaccine, be, be ready to take a pay cut. Be ready to, you know, possibly be in a situation to where, you know, you might need to figure out some different type of way to make to make your living, to make your means. Um, but if you're so afraid to take the vaccination, I really want to hear more people's stance on why they won't. The stances that I've heard, it just don't make no sense because if you're going to hold that stance, there is so many different things that you can apply that stance to right. that you don't. It's people that tell me that got all this information about the vaccine, but don't read their terms and agreements. You know, now, now let, let's take it. Let's take it to sports real quick. I'm going to keep it on the vaccine. So you got Kyrie Irving. Yeah. Kyrie don't want to take the vaccine. Mm. Kyrie plays for a New York team where it's kind of mandatory. So they're saying Kyrie is willing and this is this is this isn't don't call me this is just me saying the willing part mm -hmm. but that he will miss most of the home or all the home games because he can't play in new york if he's not vaccinated now uh -huh. but there's nothing should, should should he be damned because i'm pretty sure there's nothing in their contract that says anything about that so it's kind of like the um like how women look at the abortion thing like it's my body type thing now my stance on it i'm i'm fully vaccinated because I, I I'm have fully kids. vaccinated too. Y'all, it's pretty obvious. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I, I have kids, you know what I mean, and so I am fully vaccinated, and I'm just like I, I kind of just go with the flow of things because I don't, I don't want to be not vaccinated, and then I'm on a ventilator like two weeks later because of me just fooling around. It, you know what? It's two things to your to to what you just said. Um. My first point probably is the most obvious one is that no matter which way you cut this pie, they want to say, okay, people that are vaccinated are still getting COVID. Mm -hmm. Well, then what does that have to do? That just that just gives me an excuse to be like, okay, when you catch COVID and die, that's your fault. Facts. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. So when you catch COVID and die, that's your fault. When you, the second point is the thing that bothers me the most about the situation, right? We can sit up here and talk about Kyrie, but is everyone Kyrie? Right. So when Kyrie comes and plays basketball in the building, Kyrie don't know how many people he's infecting if he does have COVID or if he does not have any symptoms at all. Mm -hmm. But like I said, hold this point. Not everybody's Kyrie. So then if I am working in the front office and Kyrie Irving decides to stop, have a conversation with me. If I work in a tunnel, Kyrie Irving decides to stop and have a conversation with me. I contract COVID. Mm -hmm. Now, we're going to be honest and say, hey, well, you didn't take your vaccine. So you probably the one that I probably got it from. Right. Just off a of fact, you know. It, it could be the other way around or whatever like that, but we go, common denominator, it's going to be you. I'm going to be very upset if I possibly die or if I lose money because you decided to not take your vaccine. Just stay away from me. Right. You take all these other, all these other vaccines. Like, for instance, when I go to college, when, when, I, when I went to college, what's the things you got to take? What's the shots you got to take before you go to your dorm? Hepatitis, yeah, yeah, all that, uh, all that type of stuff like that, right? So when you take these, do you believe the doctors then? When you mm. when you tear your ACL and you get surgery, do you listen to the doctors then? Nobody has ever, yo, <laughs> <laughs> bro. You see a doctor yeah. all the time, right, right. But the doctor is telling you, hey, Kyrie, you might want to take this, right. you might want to do this, but no, nah, I didn't. Cause I was one of the ones I used I am legend as a um, example. Mm -hmm. And um, I was one of the ones that was like, man, if y'all gonna take that vaccine, y'all ain't never seen I am legend. Right. But I started to do my, my research. I started to talk to people that are at, that actually work in these medical centers. Right. And they like, bro, when I'm reading off this, 
what's in these vaccines, it ain't nothing but a souped up flu. So I got the vaccine. I'm like four months, five months in. I'm good. I feel great. Yeah. You know, I don't feel sick, you know, and I'm, I feel more confident that like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm keeping everybody else safe. So. And then, and then last on the vaccine mm -hmm. talk, how do y'all, how does it work with COVID in the, the, the DJ world? <laughs> Cause I know you're around like a lot of people and I know how Austin is sometimes where, you know, people just c come and go. Um, in the DJ world, man, at first it took me a minute. I didn't get my vaccine for a little minute. And, um, but um, in the DJ world, man, I've had a, um, I had an outbreak at one of the spots that I DJ at. Mm. So like that was like for sure. I was like, nah, like we let's, let's go on and take this. Like let's go on and do this now. So that was that. And then my mom was like very strict on it because my brother, my little brother, he's like very, very sickly. Mm -hmm. So it is very, very easy for him to probably catch COVID. Mm -hmm. And my mom was like very adamant, you know, like you can't come see your brother, you know, like you out here working and stuff like that, but you cannot see your brother because you're not vaccinated. You know, if you get my baby sick, you know, it's going to be yeah. all types of, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, Even though it's fight. not going to be no problem, but right, like, right. But you know what I'm talking about? It's like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, you know, have that in the back of my head mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So um, that's really what it did for me because... You know, in, in, the, in the DJ world, we get people that always try to come into the booth, request songs, all that. And I was working hard at that time because COVID for us, it didn't really help us very much. Mm. You know, um, a lot of us, you know, weren't able to get unemployment or got unemployment late. Um, you know, we had benefits for us, but our whole job market just stopped. Yeah. You know, so when I had the chance to go back out there, I was trying to get it. I was trying to get it every day. Yeah, yeah. You know, so um, just to be safe and be safe, and I wanted to see my family and stuff. Cause you never know. Um, I went on and took it. Yeah. Man, uh, first day, uh, my arm felt kind of sore, and um, those sore you, for about you five got days. Two of them? I got two. I got two. I got. I got my derma. Same. So I think I had the five. I, I mean, I went on and got it done. And the second one, I had no symptoms at all. Really? Um, some people do have symptoms. You know, that's okay. That's what happens with vaccines, yeah. people. They like, you know, so. <laughs> uh, but, but you know, I, I think, you know, people should really think about it and really weigh out their options. Be serious with themselves and weigh out your options. Like, are you willing to just not be like, okay, I didn't take the precautions of being safe and I got somebody else sick right. or, you know, I, I'm, I'm in the hospital bed now and now my family's upset because I'm about to possibly die. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So. No, I, I feel that. And we, we could talk about COVID all day. But yeah. But we not. We not. <laughs> so now, next thing I want to talk to you about is one of the good things that came out of COVID was versus. Yeah. Versus came out. I, it started. Yeah. I, the producers, the rappers, all this. Now, one of my personal favorites is Fat Joe and Ja Rule happened. I thought Fat Joe was going to win because I'm a Fat Joe fan and I know all of Fat Joe's like deep cuts. But then when Ja Rule went, I was like, oh, yeah. But Locks first dipset. That was Lock, the one. Locks first dip said what that I, was the one. I think that is what solidified Jada Kiss, but I think it solidified versus. Yeah. Now, before we get into that, mm -hmm. have you ever thought about doing like a DJ versus? And if, if you would, who would you who would you want to go against? It, it could be a peer or somebody that's, you know, up. I thought about doing a DJ versus. It depends. You gotta um most definitely match up the DJs with the right DJs. Right. It's so many of us out there. Um, me, um, if I did a DJ versus, I'd probably choose my homie Jay. Yeah. <laughs> me and me and Jay, me and Jay, we work at the same same spots. It's just a colleague of mine, and mm -hmm. um, we work at the same spots. We know we know each other, and we know what what we into and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Um, I feel like that would be a great versus battle because it would um, it would be like kind of like two people battling within the same genre right and just like just knowing each other's tricks mm -hmm. and really trying really really hard to like to outdo each other 
But um, man, I don't know, man. I'm not. I'm not even. I'm not even gonna lie to you, man. I'm not like the the biggest scratcher. Right. And stuff like that. So I feel like, man, if I if I battle a DJ from New York, man, they start to get into scratching. Yeah. Man, I'm gonna be like, all right, I'm about to pull something else out the bag. <laughs> but um, but yeah, maybe, maybe uh Jay Scheming or or, or Hella Yellow, man. I have fun. I have fun with both of those guys, man. Big up to both of y'all, man. Big up to both of y'all. So you you said you saw like some highlights of the Jada Kiss, yeah, yeah. And, and the dipset. What do you what do you think is oh, one, the like, locks? Yeah, yeah. What do you think is the most important thing that should be presented at a versus most important thing is really like first of all the and it sounds cliche because it's something that like people shouldn't already know your stage presence your mm. stage presence is number one so that means how you look how you sound on the mic your um coordination with your dj stuff like that knowing your dj knowing okay we go drop this boom we gonna go right into it um with the locks just me reviewing that whole little thing the locks had it down pat bro right like that probably was like some of the best sequencing into tracks knowing what to what my point my what well, my opponent is going to hit me with next and my opponent don't hit me with that okay i still got a, another jab another counter right it was like it was beautiful to watch, man. It was great for hip hop. It was great for rap. Um, that put another spark underneath rap, hip hop, lyrical, and and making it to where the 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 nineties, two thousands, mm -hmm. older generations of of rap and hip hop, which is still a baby, right. which is like forty years old. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, it just put a stamp on it, saying that like. We ain't forget about y'all. Right. We still got love for y'all. Uh, let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. My bad. No, you're good. You good. See, I I I I used to rap back in the day. Mm -hmm. But I'm thinking from your point of view, watching, you're a DJ. Mm -hmm. So for me, I'm looking at how on point. Jada was and you know, knowing lyrics. And I I, I don't want to say Jada, because I, I feel bad about that. How the locks were on point. But for you. What what what, what are crazy. you noticing as a DJ? Um, what I noticed is that um, who you say it, it was technique. Technique yeah, was technique. the technique was a DJ. Um, technique also had the crowd at his fingertips just as much mm -hmm. as the lots did. So it was like just an insane thing. So then when Jada bust off that freestyle, yeah. it was like. I don't care what you tell me. The freestyle technique might not might not have known the freestyle, mm -hmm. but he knew as soon as he dropped it, he bought the freestyle. Yeah. Boom. Let's go on and hey, give him that little fatal blow and go on and give it that and go on and like end it like that. No, nah, he's on a roll. He's on fire. Yeah. Let him go. Man, so um that and I mean, I was just so disappointed in Dipset, bro. Man. I was like, I was Me like, too. damn, like y'all. But here's the thing: y'all come drunk. Did y'all not meet? Did y'all come too drunk to the shit? Like, what happened? I, I've I've seen Dibs head in concert, and believe it or not, that is how they perform. Like, like it's just they uh, throw songs on. They have a bunch of dudes on the stage. You can say whatever, man. Of, yeah, that shit is sloppy. It was sad. It was sad. Did you see the uh, Fat Joe and Jada Kiss? I mean, uh, Fat Joe and Jaru? No, I didn't see it, but I heard it was like just the thing that I heard the most was just it was just disrespectful. Yeah. But, but you, I fuck with you it. You know though. what's funny though is that Technique was Fat Joe's DJ, but but I I think that it the the artist has to be the the marksman. I think Fat Joe was relying on Technique to just kind of just do what he did with the locks, but it didn't go with that. But yeah, it was it was kind of. It goes to show you who still who still sharpening their iron, mm -hmm. who's still sharpening their pen, and the locks put everybody on notice that the locks is ready yeah. for a show a tour. Whenever right. you call them. Right, yeah. I like that, bro. It means the DJ, bro. I love that. I yeah. love it when my artist is on point in sync with me. I hate it mm -hmm. when you're not. And and, and with, with Fat Joe, I know Fat Joe, he made the comments of the, the, the Dusty Bitches comments and all this stuff. And he, um, I guess, he sent flowers to Lil Mo and said, I'm sorry and all that. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that was great. Mm -hmm. 
But that leads me into cancel culture because depending who that would have been, they could be canceled. You know what I mean? Like I I heard uh, Trick Daddy and Trina, they got their radio show canceled. Some say it's because he said what he said about Beyonce. I don't know. Damn, I didn't even hear about that. Yeah, he said Beyonce can't sing. And the Beehive just tore him up. That's just not facts. Right, yeah, but but I mean, it's an opinion. It's an opinion. It's, a, it's an opinion, though, man. But, I, but it be canceled. Do do you think that cancel culture is 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 messing up? When I say the game, I'm not talking about just music, but just everything. Like, do you mm-hmm. think it's taking away the free speech? I know that you can't be talking all grimy all day, but I feel like now we have to really tiptoe about what we say. And if somebody gets canceled, then they got to do the most. To, um, Cause I mean, just you gotta give this like unsincere apology or something. You know what I'm saying? Everybody gotta say sorry. Like, do, do you agree with cancel culture, or do you think that it's a little bit much? Um, I feel like cancel culture is a little bit much. Um, the main thing that we as humans should realize, because as far as us being born as an infant, you know, you don't cancel the infant because the infant do something. Mm-hmm. You don't cancel. The, the teenager because the teenager did something like that. The thing that you want is that you want people to learn and understand. That's the main thing. Like I literally can't cancel you out of life. Like like you know what I'm talking about? Like I can't right right like how far am I able to cancel you? Like it's gonna be somebody else that likes your opinion mm-hmm. that is going to feed into what you want to feed into. Now, I'm not saying also, because I kind of feel both ways on it. I'm not saying also that, like, boom, you got a big-ass platform, and you, like, spewing all this, like, crazy shit, and you, like, not really, like, checking up on stuff, Mm. going, like, doing your research. If it's just totally opinion-based, well, then your fans should be able to be opinion-based, too. So, but if you're trying to speak on things that are facts, you should be able to you know re- retract or re or reassess your thinking yeah you know uh so i i, I cancel course cancer culture yeah it's like okay i guess it's like suspended culture because right, like really right, to right, me yeah yeah because like like you just like you're not really canceled like everybody that's all oh, you're canceled and then like months later everyone forgets about it and i'm like you just yeah. doing that stuff no the main thing about it it should not be no cancel culture it should be some form of it suspending culture but really what we really should be focusing on it's not cancel it's getting these people to learn and understand right. the lessons about what the hell you just said and how that offends people and yeah. how that offends your fans because obviously the people that's going to cancel you were somewhat your fans right right you know so now now let's let's take it to um rolling loud the baby he said what he said mm-hmm. you know what he said okay you're a DJ, mm-hmm. so I know that you get on the mic, you say, I mean, I've been in the club, they say, if you got more than $5 in your pocket, say, oh, raise your hand, whatever, whatever. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, 20 in your wallet, yeah. put your hands up, yeah. So, so yeah, do, right do you think that what he said was really wrong? <laughs> I'm not gonna say what he I, said, but do you think like, because it sounded like how DJs do, you know what I mean? Like, just, just to be like, yo, if, if you, Hypothetically saying, like, if you kiss a girl in the parking lot, say, hey, you know what I mean? And it's, it's not talking down on anybody who didn't, you know what I'm saying? But it's just saying that if you did, then say, hey, and if you don't, then... Like, okay, I treat it like this. Like, I'm not going to say what he said was wrong or, you know, like, he's he should be canceled because mm-hmm. he said it, you know? But I'm going to say this, though, like... It just wasn't smart. Right. Like, right. it just wasn't smart. It was the wrong place, wrong yeah. time. Bro, like, I don't I don't walk in to a place where it's a whole bunch of people that believe in the opposite of what the fuck I'm going to say, and I just say it. But who, <laughs> like, but, but who canceled them, though? Was I don't think the people at the event were the canceled. I think it was the people who saw the recap yeah. who got offended. And, and, then, and then, I mean, like, really... Really, what happened was all the all the event planners and stuff like that, all the people that had these other concerts that he was on, festivals that he was on. I feel like they just tried to do damage control, right? And you gotta realize 
that these people, their bottom line is not you. Right. As an artist. Mm -hmm. Their bottom line is not you, the baby. Their bottom line is their fans. Now, if they fans got a problem with you, they go take you off of there. Why would I disrespect my money machine? Right, right. Mm -hmm. Unless I can fix my money machine, but that's with you, bro. I can't. You a grown man, right? I don't want to tell you what you what you um, could can say, right? Can't say, but I'm gonna tell you this: once you say it, you gotta deal with the you gotta deal with the repercussions, yeah. my G. Like, come on, like, what was the point? When I really think about it, the baby could have had that same performance, maybe even better, mm -hmm. without saying that. Right. You laid your bed. You pissed in your bed. Yeah. Laying it. Yeah. <laughs> I never heard it said that way. <laughs> you pissed in your bed, fam. So, I mean, so do, do you, has there ever been a time in, in the DJ world that, that that has happened? And not necessarily with you, but just, because now, like I said, everything's hypersensitive. So, so let me ask you this. Everything's hypersensitive. So now, do you have to, like, think before you say anything that it doesn't offend people? I'm going to be honest. You know what? The Boondocks has done this. <laughs> and it's crazy because it's, it's going on right now mm -hmm. with the R. Kelly trial. Oh, man. <laughs> so, I'm going to be honest, people. America, world. Wait, he's like, uh, H2EG does I, not agree. I, <laughs> I'm going to be honest because I want, I want everybody to know. <laughs> like, R. Kelly, the musician, mm -hmm. is amazing. And like, I can't, I, I'm going to be honest. Like, if I play R. Kelly in public, I feel like, damn. Right. <laughs> like, but at home, <laughs> like, I'm going to play some 12 play. Yeah. And then I go through it and I'll be like, I can't listen to this song. It's a little bit too. Right. I yeah. got I got, I got to skip it. So like Art Kelly only gets played like a little bit. But yeah, that's kind of where I, I I can feel like that because like literally uh, we have we have a DJ group message. I have multiple DJ group messages. We had this conversation earlier. We was like, damn. So is it wrong if I play Step in the Name of Love? That, that's the like, black barbecue music, man. It's just like, damn, R. Kelly, why you here? Yeah. Bro, come on. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I have that problem with R. Kelly. Um, I don't agree with anything that he did. Right. Um, if anybody, uh, I mean, I, from what I've heard, it's been, he's been like this for a minute. I mean, of course, with Aaliyah. Yeah, yeah. You know, it had to be. And it, it ain't just start there, you know. And um, I think it started with his sister doing it to him. Man. Uh, yeah, and them women, and them, oh man, you seen the tour videos of them? Jesus Christ. He be like, damn, they just, they want it. Yeah. But, uh, so, so do, you, do you think, like, some of the parents are to blame? And I'm not, I'm, and I'm my, saying my this mom not agreeing would, with anything that happened, but, like, some, I feel like some of these people were pawned off to him in, in hope to get the fame, the fortune, and disregarding the reputation. Man. Um, with with the, with the girls involved, mm -hmm. oh, with the with the family, like some like the families had to give the okay at some point. Yeah, I mean, based off of what I've saw, it, if they acting like that at his shows, yeah, bruh, I mean, I, and I be with rappers, yeah, and rappers don't get that love like that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like hey, rappers don't get that love. That is a crazy fan base, and I totally believe it, man. I believe, you know, if you were to tell me, like you just like you just told me, man, and the parents had to give some type of some type of go, and yeah. they like, damn, that's just the pie popper R and B right there. Mm -hmm. And he pie popper your ass to give up your daughter. <laughs> it's a damn shame. You, you need some evaluation. <laughs> no. I want to take this time to get some one-on-one -on -one with you. <laughs> let's, let's switch gears. Okay, Way let's off start. That. Let, let, let leave Kelly alone, man. <laughs> All right, so enough with the, the trending topics and cancel culture and everything. I want to get into some one-on-one -on -one with you. DJ Scion, where did that name come from? 
Um, believe it or not, that's my last name. That is literally my last name. S Y O N D J Sion. Really? Sion is my last name. I, I was I was expecting that just a crazy answer. And I get that face all the time. Uh, get a lot of compliments too. People are like, "What? Like that's your last name? That's cool as fuck." Like, yeah, because I, I respect that. Like when when the rappers come out with their names, you know what I'm saying? Like like Kendrick Lamar Duckworth or something like that. Like I, I respect that because mm -hmm. my name is DJ, so I always thought I, oh, if I was gonna be yeah. DJ, be DJ, DJ. But then it would kind of be corny. Nah, it wouldn't. You can make it work. I feel like you can make it work. I feel like you got, you got enough swag to make it work. Maybe, maybe. Yes, sir. So, how did you... Okay, I want to say, how did you get into DJing? And when did you fall in love with DJing? Oh, man. Um, I got into DJing, um, I know the exact date, too. Mm. Um, well, I know the exact date that I did my first show. And that's mm -hmm. kind of where I mark my, this is my DJ career. Um, February 13th, 2013. Okay. Um, so yeah, uh, I was, I was playing football and, um, with football, I, I've noticed this literally my dad was always up on music. Yeah. So this is back when, when you had to like flip through the damn, the, the CD mm -hmm. shit. It was like four CD slots over here. Four CD slots yeah, over yeah, here. Yeah. The CD binder. So when I was in little school, uh, I'm not little school, when I was in Little League, um, I would always listen like to Crunk Juice and everything mm. like that, like all that before. I would go through my dad's CDs. Like he's a big Wu-Tang fan, big 90s rap fan. Mm -hmm. So like it evolved from me doing from there, from literally just me just knowing music. Right. And then I get to middle school. People still, I, I, I haven't played the music that I hear to people. I get to high school, now people are like, okay, this is when like the, the iPod shuffle is out mm -hmm. and then people have speakers in, right, the, right. in the in the in the locker room inside the your high school, people got speakers and shit. So I start playing uh, music out loud and people would be like, yo, hook up, hook up your hook up your phone. Play some music. Like you you got the you got tunes, mm -hmm. like this is my shit. Like, son, you always put me on some music. Da 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 da. Get to college. Um, same thing. Like they would ask me. Sion, play the music for us before mm -hmm. practice, before the games and all that stuff like that. And then um, I had a falling out of football um, around like 2012, 2013. Um, just really wasn't, it wasn't working out in the academic stance right. for me. Like they still wanted me on the team and stuff like that. But like my mind was, was somewhere else. Um, and it ended up getting me into DJ, man. And, um, I pulled up to my first event, man. I used my, I used my, uh, my Pell Grant. I yeah. used the Pell Grant. I used all that. I remember it was like spring. It was a, I got that spring little check coming back from, uh, from winter break, mm -hmm. man. I bought me a, I uh, bought me a Mac and I bought me a DJ turntable. And, um, man, I just started just being in the house and just teaching myself, really. Like, no one's ever taught me to DJ, man. Like, I literally learned myself. Wow. I had my own library. I already knew the songs. So I was just adding in the songs. The library was like half of the battle. Right, right. You know, so uh, you got a good library, shit. You, you're going to make some people dance. Yeah. And I DJed on, I brought my computer speakers, like little computer speakers. I DJed on top of a fucking stove in the kitchen at a house party. Wow. And from then on there, I bought some big speakers and took them. And I think that's where um, that love came in. Yeah. Most definitely. February 13th, 2013, that love also came in there because that was the start. And that was also when I knew that I could do this. No, but no. Pun intended or whatever, but like you fell in love with DJing like right before Valentine's. I did, yeah, for real. That's crazy, for real. Like it was like a, um, I think it was like it had to be like a, a Saturday or a Friday or something like mm -hmm. that, man. And I just, man, it, it, it's a blessing, man, just to see how far I came. You know, I, I had one DJ gig. I, I don't want to call it a gig. It was like a, a job interview, mm. and the playlist was given to me. And I said, I'm gonna go in there and kill this. 
I was 20, 20 years old. I was living in the valley. It was at a strip club. I did horrible. Well, all them strippers were so mad at me. Like songs yeah, were I going could. in regular. And that I, was your first one? In the strip club? Yeah, yeah. Because, Damn, fam. Because cause I, that, them, them girls, they going to let you know. I know. Them girls don't hold nothing and back. It, and it was daytime, too. They trying to make their money. It was daytime. And so I lied and said, oh, yeah, I, I know some things about a DJ. Boy, I ain't know nothing. I ain't know how to flip through the Serato. It was horrible. But, I mean, you know, it was hey, fun. I, was, to, I got to go in the strip club for free. Got to take your bumps and bruises, man. Yeah. What happens? You got to pick yourself back up, man. It's not where you start. It's where you finish. Hey. I sound like a coach. Damn, I sound like a damn you coach. DJ coach. Hey. Hey man, come on, holla at me, man. Holla at me. Go on, get <laughs> get your services. Yeah. So, so okay, now that was my first and only worst time DJing. What 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 is a a worst or a bad experience you had DJing? And, oh, and all that. And what is the toughest crowd you overcame while DJing? Damn. Um, that's a tough one, man, because the, most of those I tried to forget. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. But um, um, I tell you, you know what? I can I can do you a little bit better. The toughest thing with DJ, and I'm pretty sure this is like in the ballpark of the toughest time. It most definitely probably was a concert that was probably my toughest time DJ. Because mm -hmm. concerts, you have a certain crowd that's there for a certain artist, mm -hmm. and you can't like you you gotta a piece of the crowd. So that means that you have to play a certain type of music that's around that artist possibly, mm -hmm. you know? So when I do, um, damn, uh, when I do concerts, the thing that bothers me the most is the openers. Okay. The openers and sometimes the main artists have no sync with the DJ, like, we, like I just talked. Right. So they'll get me like a USB oh, yeah. or whatever like that and like, they don't have any of the songs in order, mm. or they don't have any of the songs. They, don't even, they haven't even emailed me. They're not ready. So sometimes concerts can be a big headache. That's yeah. why, like, when concerts come, like, I'm like ten toes. Like, I'm like, I'm a hundred. Like, I'm, I'm like trying to let you know, like, this needs to be handled. Yeah. So I remember there was um, actually, you know, I talk about my recent concert. My recent concert, we I played on uh, some CDJs. I didn't know that when I plugged in and I was taking out the USBs, it made my it made Serato freeze. Why? I guess it's trying to process what's going on. Oh, so it stops. So it free it froze and it did that like three times. So then like about like three times for about like five minutes. We didn't have no sound and like that. And I just said, nah, fuck it. I'm just, I just went to go grab my, my DJ equipment out of my car and set up, set up mm -hmm. my shit. So um, yeah, concerts are most definitely probably my biggest headaches from the artist, uh, from the openers not really knowing what they're doing. Um, normally the main artist knows what they're doing because they've right. done this. Yeah. But uh, from that, um, just, Dealing with artists in general, some people are, are just not very smart. You know what's crazy? I, I used to be so shysty when I was rapping because I came across some DJs who would just mess some things up. So what I used to do, and if I if I gave a USB or a CD, it would have everything in order. But if I didn't know the DJ, I would say, don't touch nothing. I would do my track, everything on one track. I got my spaces, all that. I'm like, don't touch nothing. You can hit some gunshots I every fuck now with and you. then. I fuck with you, yeah. dude. I'm like, bro, you made my, you made my job so much yeah. easier because I don't know you. Right. You don't know me. Right. I don't know how you rap. I don't know any of your songs. Like some some artists be up there, man, they be thinking they superstar. Yeah. I be like, nah, fam, this 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 not it. You don't get a 20 minute sound check. My right, guy. yeah. <laughs> you don't you don't you don't go through all your stuff. I just want to make sure your levels is good. Mm -hmm. da, 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 da. Be ready, have your peoples ready, and know what time you get on. Yeah. And stuff like that. So um, a lot of a lot of problems at concerts yeah. sometimes. Sometimes. So, wh what was the um? Who's the biggest artist you you DJ for? Biggest artist you DJ for? Uh, D that I DJ for. Um. Um. Always big shout out to Maxo. Shout out Maxo. Um. Time. Maxo is is well on his way. If he's if people don't consider him big now, he's I, I think well he's on big. his way. Um. 
Maxo, beginning stages of Maxo was great. I learned a lot, great experiences. Um, damn, biggest artist, because I feel like most of the artists that I'm going to name, they're kind of like in the same tier. Like you could kind of like but pick but and who choose. Did, who did you think? Man, like honestly, other than, other than Max Solis, like really having a good time, but Currency, Currency mm. was a was a whole vibe because Currency had damn, um, he had the the bass guitar solo. Mm. Um, he had um, he bought he bought his DJ out for his set. Right, right. Um, I DJ for Chief Keith. Chief Keith was fucking fun. Yo, for yeah, real. man, the, the legend, the young legend, man. Yeah, and man. Uh, talk about that a little bit. Chief Keith was fun, man. We did Chief Keith in San Antonio. That was fun as fuck, man. Like, just it was just so random, and it, it was at a spot that's no longer open. Uh, shout out Corova, mm. Cor Corova, Corova, but uh, out there in San Antonio, um, that was fun as fuck. Um, damn, who else I DJ for? Uh, Rob Banks. Um, God damn, it's, and like now I, f I forget because like now I'm starting to br trying to bring them on tour now. Yeah. I mean, hey man, we 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 working. I'm trying to get that back end hey, check. I'm trying to put man. my homies on the DJ and get yeah. these experiences like I have. Um, but like those most definitely are are one. Uh, I remember one night I was I guess I was DJing for uh, Ghost Man that night. Ghost Man is like a different artist. The, the white the white dude. Yeah, white yeah, dude. Like yeah. bro, like he has like a. Man, we talking about a cult following like that. Like yeah, I know. Rob Banks, I all know. them, they got like a whole different thing going on, man. I love yeah. it, man. I love the energy. Cause the, their crowd is like full of energy. Like they're gonna is mosh Rob Banks pit. The one with the um the kill bell? Uh I don't remember. Kill uh, I think so. I think yeah, so. Yeah. Rob Banks is the one he used to be um uh, Damn. My bad, Rob. Don't hey. Forgive me, bro. For, for, forgive me, bro. But we got him on tour and stuff like that. But like, Rob Branks was on tour. I think we had Ghost Man on there mm -hmm. too. Um, they were on tour together. Um, man, I was I was doing a show, and uh, I ran into Drake. Who? I I, I yep. randomly ran into Drake. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> hey man, yep. hey what I was I was I was I ran into Drake. Thanks to Maxo, Maxo, uh, I was I did a show one night. Um, Maxo was like, "Come to this bowling alley." And I'm like, "Okay, nigga, we going bowling? I guess. I mean, all right, you know, I just want to kick it with the homie. I just want to kick it with my bro. So, kicking it with him. And I see like all these fucking cars outside. I'm like, "Damn, there's a whole bunch of niggas bowling today." I was like, "God damn, what the? It's like 12 o'clock. I'm like, damn, niggas is bowling late. I'm like, all right." I walk up in there, it's like a bunch of, and I walk in there, first of all, you see Instagram bitches. I saw mm. bitches, bitches, the top tier Instagram yeah, bitches. I was like, wait, hold on. Of the line. Where the hell am I at? Yeah. So I walk in, I see Max on, and we then shake hands, you know, all that. And um, Drake walks up behind us. And I'm like, what? He's like, Drake, hop in the video. <laughs> like, I'm in a video with Drake. And I'm like, bruh. You know what been so dope? Axo. Put me on a tour. Give me on a tour. Give me on, let me yeah. go on, let me go on, get a, get a little set in. We, we, like, you know, we gonna we gonna get cool with Drizzy. You know what I'm talking about? But like, it was a, it's a, it's, it's a lot of shit that I've done. A lot of people that I've, that I've DJ for that I kind of don't remember. You know what I do really miss though? Mm -hmm. South by Southwest, bro. Man. Ask me, ask me after South by Southwest. Ask me this question after South by Southwest. I'm gonna be back. So, yeah. Ask me that question. What was your what was your 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 highlight moment South by? Whether it be as a as a um a fan or a DJ. Highlight moment. Okay, so I'm I'm gonna get back deep. This had to be like 2014, 15. Um RIP. RIP ASAP Yams, man. Yeah, RP. So I remember we were we were at Mohawk. That's off of Red River in Eighth, yeah. but it's off of Red River, uh, Red River and Tiff, something like that. So we're there, and we get invited to the ASAP Mob show. Mm -hmm. Also, this night, RIP, we saw Nipsey Hussle and YG Where? that night in in Complex. 
It was at the mall. It was it was called the House of Ann's oh, okay. at the time. They did they did house. It was House oh, yeah, of Ann's at Mohawk. Yeah, yeah. So I think that night before or the two nights before, they had Tyler the Creator, mm -hmm. and some person had drove on the wrong side of the road and hit them people. And, hit yep. them people. Mm -hmm. and then like a couple days later or a day later, they had ASAP Mob there at House of Ann's. Mm -hmm. So ASAP Mob fuck with Maxo Tough. Mm -hmm. So they invited Maxo and whole cream click we went out there and we had a great time and um actually got a chance to talk to asap yams a little bit and man he reaped nothing but praise for maxo he was like maxo is the next biggest fucking thing yeah. out of houston and look at him now and then that night um i still got video on my phone um they shut down they literally shut down mohawk like really? the fire marshals came the oh. lights went out I was in plush and they came in plush. Bruh. They came in, did like a five minute set, dip. They was killing South yeah. by Southwest at the time. Yeah. They hold up like three years span, three, four years span. ASAP Mob and all them was killing. Yeah. So yeah, like that was probably like my highlight moment. Um, one more. I'll give you one more. Uh shit, there's so many good, good moments. Like back in that 2000, between 2010. 2015 yeah. time for South by you had the secret shows and yeah. shit. Uh, I remember walking to a secret show uh, in a place that like I don't even know if it's open now. Um, but it was like an alleyway and walked in, Kid Cuddy's performing mm. and like, free drinks everywhere. Uh, I remember walking in one place, I smoked weed with, with Wiz Khalifa. I smoked with Ty Dolla Sign. Yeah, Big yeah. Ty. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. That's cool shit. Fucking meeting Nipsey Hustle on the goddamn mm -hmm. street. I saw Nipsey Hustle perform with YG, ASAP Ferg in the backyard. That's crazy. With Childish Gambino, um, Cameron, Young Thug. Childish, I need to, I need to tape, bro. Like ASAP, bro. I need some more music, Childish. I know you got Atlanta going. I know. I'm ready. I'm ready for that. Yes, sir. I'm ready for that. But now, let's switch gears again. Got gotcha. you. Let's you go. Getting this trivia. I hope you're knowledgeable. You're a music guy. You're a sports guy. I think you're I'm, a movie guy. I think I got it. I think I got it. I think get I'm your tingling. Tennis going. When we come back, we will get into this trivia. H2EG backstage. I'm Moke. It's DJ Sion. Welcome back to H2EG backstage. I am Moke. I got DJ Sion with me. Yes, sir. Got My guy. Trivia. All you right. Feel? You ready? I'm. I'm ready. Let's go. All right. I'm. I'm gonna start off easy. Okay. Just the first one. All right. All right. All right. We go see. This is this is multiple choice. You can answer whenever you feel you're ready, or you can just wait. Okay. This Los Angeles Laker outscored the entire opposing team three through three quarters of play. A. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. B. Kobe Bryant. C. Wilt Chamberlain. D. Magic Johnson. Damn. I want to go with Bing, mm -hmm. but man, I'm gonna go with Wilt, bro, because Wilt was crazy. Sure. You you asked me again. Hold on, hold on. So give, give me give me the, give me the give me the options I got again. A Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, B Kobe Bryant, C Will Chamberlain, D Magic Johnson. No fuck, I'm gonna go with B, bro. You are correct. I was about to say Kobe would be frowning because he's eighty. Because eighty one, right? Was it was it the eighty one game? Yeah. Yeah, eighty one. Yeah. Man. yeah. Damn, Jalen Rose. <laughs> Man. <laughs> Damn. Next question is true or false. Aretha Franklin is the first woman to be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I'm going to say yeah. So you're going to say true? Yeah, I'm going to say true. You are correct. Okay. You are correct. With that voice, yeah. Better. What duo won the first Grammy for Best Rap Performance? Duo won the first Grammy for best rap performance. Okay, I'm gonna just I'm gonna just think about the duos that I know that are great. All right, man, I'm gonna go with this random one, and I think this random one is a good one. Though. Right. Outcast. What duo won the first Grammy? What the first Grammy for best rap performance? You going to Outcast? I'm gonna go with Outcast, bro. Okay. DJ Jazzy Jeff and Will Smith. God damn, I forgot, bro. That's on that's on 2K. That's on 2K. For real. Alright, so 
we before we uh started the show we were talking about um you doing acting and stuff and having agencies and everything like mm -hmm. that would you rather be an extra in a box office smash or be the face of a box office flop i'd be the face of a box office flop because i ain't write it yeah i just acted i just did what they told me to do so you, I can somebody else that. gonna holler at me i can respect hey that. somebody else gonna holler at me man next one's true or false Jimi Hendrix only had one top 40 number one hit. Damn. That's a good one. Damn, whoever made these questions, you go, okay. <laughs> uh, I'm going to do two. No, nah, he had more than one. I'm going to say he had more than one. It's Jimmy. shit. Why the hell he had more than one? The hell's going on? True or false? True. True. His only number one hit was all along the watchtower. See, look, y'all wrong for that. So I mean, like you, you answered true, but you didn't mean true. I, I, the the way that it was, I had to think about it because it was only like a couple of Jimi Hendrix songs. You know what? Just go on and count that one. Just go on and count that one. Go on, go on. No, nah, just go on and give me that. Just go on and uh, give me yeah, that, bro. Yeah, you got it. I, I just go on and give me that. No, no. Have I'm not losing game. today. All right, you, you, you're like you're kind of like in between. Wh whoever making these questions, I got you. Only one of these four boxers failed to register a victory against Muhammad Ali: A. George Foreman, B. Joe Frazier, C. Leon Spinks, D. Larry Holmes. I'm gonna go with C. C. Leon Spinks. A. George Foreman. Damn. Now, now Damn, where, where am I at now? Where am I at you're, now? You're like below 50. Damn. All right. Come on. <laughs> I'm going to have to. Um, Shit. What was Ken Jeong's profession before becoming a famous actor and comedian? Who? That's the guy, Um, the little funny guy in, in Hangover. Oh, uh, he was a doctor. Yep. Yeah, yeah I, know, I, know, I know that one. I just ran a fact, but I know that one. All right, this is uh, either or. Okay. Would you rather spend 30 days in jail or say Candyman in the mirror five times? Say Candyman in the mirror five times? I ain't spent that, man. <laughs> I'm going to tell you that jail is not fun, people. Personal experience. It is not. I would rather say Candyman, too. Candyman? I ain't scared of Candyman. All right. Now, Whitney Houston famously covered I Will Always Love You who sang the original song? Damn, you got me beat on that. I mean, you ain't gonna give me no, no multiple choice? Shit. <laughs> no, no, no multiple choice question. God damn, y'all just set me up in here. Uh. Whitney Houston famously covered I Will Always Love You. Who sang the original version? Can you sing some of it for me? You know, left. I, it, man, you know the song? Man. I was just trying to see if they'll help. They ain't help. <laughs> um, shit. I thought it was her the whole time. It wasn't. I recently found I recently found it like maybe two years ago, though. How the hell y'all gonna give me a question that you recently found out? Okay. Hey, because it's today. I found out two Damn, years ago. Damn, no A, B, C. Okay, all right. Uh, Damn, who was... Shit. She white. She white. God damn. No, man, just just tell me. I don't want to disrespect nobody. Dolly Parton. God damn. Dolly Parton? I know, but Whitney she did probably ain't so singing like that. She That's probably ain't singing like that. That's why everybody think it's Whitney's song. Whitney, Whitney crashed it, man. R.P. Whitney. Now this is R.P. Whitney. Now this is what you rather have. I'll give you three options. Would okay. you rather have Beyonce's talent, mm. the business mind of Jay Z, or the creativity of Kanye West? Would you rather have Beyonce's talent? Damn, that sounds business, good. I know, right? The business mind of Hove okay. with the creativity of Kanye. You know what? I'm going to have to go with the talent of Beyonce. Because, Lord, if I could sing, it's over. Would you, would you, would you dance <laughs> it's over. Oh, man, I already got that talent. That's already good. I mean, you, you ain't taking away no other talent, so I'm good. 
then this mind, Jay Z. I don't think. I mean, I think Jay Z could teach me like a little bit more, like how to like financially do my money and shit mm. like that. But like, man, singing like Beyonce, that's priceless. I know, right? That's priceless, man. Hey, it is over, fellas. You still got it's, like fifty. You know, you like. You know, Damn, one thing bro. I was thinking about though. I from, shot like Shaq at the free throw line. A little actually bit better. Kinda better. But but from a glance at you, you look like Javale McGee. Oh. That's the first time I got that. I get DMX and Omar from the Wire all the time. Omar from the Wire. <laughs> oh, they. That, oh, that's that's, that's the one. Yeah, I get that. I all get. The time. So that's the first time I got that one. I got. Um, I get Derrick Rose. Oh, I can see that. If you like Derrick had the straight Rose. face, like that when is, you made the shot. When I, when, yeah. I, when I didn't have a beard, it was like <laughs> you're Derrick Rose. <laughs> like oh my god, you're Derrick Rose. It was like uh, uh, Jason Tatum too. I get Jason Tatum a lot. Um. Other than that, like, I remember some kid stopped me. He's like, "Mommy, is that Will Smith?" I was like, "Ah, uh, that might have just been like a in racist what's thing." <laughs> I was like, "I was like, eh, I wish." You know, like a, a shameless thing that I did one time. I was in Vegas. I got a Bob was there performing. Yeah. I got mistaken for him, and some Asian people thought I was him. I took pictures. Fuck yeah, hey, I'm I'm down with I signed it. Autograph, took pictures. I'm down with it, girl. I'm, hey, you know, hey, I'm, we we go get these pictures in. We go have fun, and um, you go find out later. Yeah, yeah, I know, right? You go find <laughs> out. Don't be mad at me. You came up to me when you see me checking into the Golden Nugget. <laughs> I'm checking in. Hey, bags, no Louis Vuitton, no nothing. <laughs> Jansport. No PJ. <laughs> straight economy. You got, you got spirit. <laughs> spirit. Straight, straight spirit. Yeah. yeah, you already know. Yo, so I appreciate you for um being here. I know you just got off your. It wasn't a tour. You weren't. It wasn't a tour. Man, it's a celebration, man. Celebration. You did. It, it, it was my Max, birthday so. Monday, so like I just was like, man, let me go on and get the hell up out of here. So I appreciate you for coming here, talking, chopping it up, man. Yes, sir. Tell the people where they can find you and what what clubs you DJing at. Man, uh, you can find me anywhere on West Six. I'm at Greenlight Social, um, Concrete, Pop, um, Play. You know, just check my Instagram at DJ Sion Cream. That's DJ S Y O N K R E A M. Find me there. Hit me up. You want to know where I'm DJing at? Hey, I'm not afraid to answer you. Yo. I'm for the people, bro. It's always a pleasure, man. Yes, sir. Yes. Make sure y'all check out H2EG backstage on H2N Group, and make sure y'all check me, Moak, Moak and Friends on SoundCloud, Facebook, YouTube, anywhere a podcast can be found. Thank you for joining us. Make sure you check this. Oh, you're a gamer. Give your gamer tag. Oh, my gamer tag on uh, PS5 and PlayStation game. So um, DJ Scion Cream, same as my handle. You want to check me out on Twitter, Instagram, DJ Scion Cream. That's DJ S-Y-O-N K-R-E-A-M. Y'all have a good night. What's up, mom?